Welcome back everyone. Today I'm going to be commencing our review of the McFarland Toys Warhammer 40k Ultramarines Primaris Assault Intercessor Action Figure. Is this action figure a paragon of resound perfection or should it be relegated to the dumpster or is it characterized by insipid, unalloyed mediocrity in the form of a quantity that's going to have to raise this action figure to be a 7 out of 10? Why? It's meticulously detailed. It has a stupendous sculpt. It has high quality shadings, high quality details, and of course high quality textures. This action figure it's a meritorious figure, to say the least. And, of course, you can army build him at your own discretion. He coincides eminently well with the 6 to 7 inch prodigious action figure collection, and he emulates his comic book counterpart, to say the least. What are my gripes appertaining to this figure? What should my consternation? What should my dismay? He commands a lofty, steep, staggering, hefty, exorbitant premium price. That's 250% greater. The retail price of an $8 Toy Biz Marvel Legends action figure or an $8 DC Universe Classics action figure. In spite of them commanding a retail price that is 250% greater, the retail price of an $8 Toy Biz Marvel Legends action figure in stark contrast to an $8 Toy Biz Marvel Legends action figure is devoid of a build-a-figure piece for behemoths of a robust, meticulously detailed, stupendous, colossal 14-16 inch build-a-figure. Moreover, he's also devoid of a comic book. His accessories are scant. Fortunately, much to my relief, he comes with a stand, but at the $20 plus sales tax price point, which is 250% greater, the retail price of an $8 Tobias Marvel Legends action figure, he should come bundled with additional figures, additional armaments, comic books, DVDs. They should try to compact as much value into the package as they can, especially at the cost prohibitive $20 plus sales tax price point, which is outside the parameters of most action figure collectors' budgets, unfortunately. So if this action figure were priced at $8, I'd rate him to be a 9 out of 10, but that's not the case in this context, unfortunately. If he had metallic paint applications, that would have been inevitably epic. If he had more armaments that he could wield, that would have been preferable. It also would have been nice if he came with interchangeable hands so he could pummel and clobber his adversaries to death. This guy is somewhat burly and bulky. He has heft. He looks like he's poised for battle. He's primed for war. He's ready to enter the fray, be embroiled in combat, and give his adversaries a much needed, much warranted trouncing. So, I would love to rate him to be a 10 out of 10, but he lacks a build a figure piece. He lacks a comic book. He only comes with three accessories, including um, a stand, a pistol, and a chainsword. He shook him with interchangeable hands, comics, build-a-figure pieces, and of course more accessories. The more they could add into the package, especially at the $20 price point, the merrier. The old adage, the more the merrier is always true. Less is less and more is more. So I hope that you found this video to be intriguing and enthralling. My final review score, my final verdict is 7 out of 10 at best for this Warhammer 40k army builder action figure. If he had a weathering effect, if he had metallic deco, then I'd more than likely rate him to be an 8 out of 10. But unfortunately, that's not the case in this context. There were really no major improvements that could have been made other than to have added additional figures to the package at the $20 cost prohibitive price point. I hope that you found this video to be engrossing. I hope that you were bedazzled and regaled. Have a wonderful day.
McFarland Toys has done an outstanding job in this context. Goodbye.